Hi there guys and welcome to another video. Now in this video we're going to be looking at how we can actually reset the password of a Unify controller in Docker, Linux, Mac OS and Windows. Sounds interesting? Then let's get started. Hi there guys. So, resetting a Unify controller's password. So the other day I was on site at a client's office and they had a Unify controller running there which controlled two separate sites and between those two sites I think there are around I think 12 different access points. Now they wanted to add another couple of access points into the mix but this client doesn't like anyone knowing their passwords and they keep all of their own passwords but somehow they've managed to lose the password for logging into the Unify controller. So from what was looking like it was going to be a really simple job, it was actually turning into a nightmare job, and I was thinking I was going to have to reset all of those 12 access points and reset up a new Unify controller and adopt them all into that. Well, after the client had looked through various books and guessed various passwords, I knew we were never going to get in that way, and I really didn't want to have to reset all those access points. So I was thinking there must be a way somehow of resetting the password. Now when you first set up your username and password in a Unify controller, it isn't stored in plain text. It's stored as what's called a salt password. Now the first thing that happens when you enter the password and save it, is the password runs through a one-way hashing algorithm. This basically turns the password into an unrecognisable string of characters. So looking at it, you can't tell what the password is. Now this on its own isn't a salted password. A salted password actually adds something before it actually goes through the algorithm. So before it goes through the algorithm, a salted password just adds some random pieces of data to the password and then sends it through that one-way algorithm creating the hashed password. So as you can imagine, looking in the database at these hashed salted passwords, we're not going to find out what the password is. So that's no good there. But what we can do is if we were to set up another Unify controller and set the password just to be password, then we could look in the database and see what the salted password is for that word that we know, and then we could actually change that in the database of another Unify controller using that same salted password and we'd know what it is. So then theoretically, we should be able to log in. Okay, so let's try that out now. I'm going to set up a new Unify controller container on my Unraid server and then extract that password out of the database. Now if you're following along this video to reset your Unify controller password, you don't need to do this bit yourself because the password and all of the details how to do this are in a document that's attached in the description of this video. Now I'm sure some of you guys were saying, well why are you showing this Space Invader, what's the point? If we don't need to do this step ourselves, why don't we just skip straight through to that next part? Well the point is, is I think it's important the people have the opportunity not just to follow along typing in commands that some random guy on YouTube tells them to do. It's much better to have an understanding of why you're doing it and what's happening. But if you want to just fast forward to the actual how to do bits, then each section of this video has got a heading showing what part it is. And this video has parts showing how to reset the Unify controller when it's running in Docker, Linux, Mac OS and Windows. So just look for the header and go to the part that you want for you. But for you guys who want to see how I got the password, then let's go across onto my Unraid server and set up a Unify controller there, then set up an admin user and password, and then extract that password from the database. Okay, so on this server I don't have a Unify controller running, so I'm going to install that now. The Unify controller here is a container by Linux server. So I'm going to click on here to install. I'm going to choose the default branch, which is the latest. I'm just going to change the name here to Unify Controller Test. And I'm going to scroll down to the bottom here and show more settings. And I'm just going to call the app data the same Unify Controller hyphen test. And this is just so the app data folder is not what it was originally called. It's just called test. Okay, so now I'm going to click apply and done. And I'm going to go to the web UI, ignoring those errors. I'm just going to call this test and agree to the license. Click on to next. Now I don't have a Ubiquiti account, so I'm going to switch to advanced setup here. And I'm going to just toggle these across onto no. 
and the local administration name I'm going to put that as admin and the local password well I'm going to make that password and password and email I'm just going to make one up my email at email.com okay so I'm going to click on to next and next again and next again I'm going to skip this so I'm not really actually setting anything up this is only just to generate a password okay so everything's done so now I'm going to close this window here and I'm going to go back to the container but this time instead of going to the web UI I'm going to open a console window and I'm going to check if MongoDB is installed in this container so I'm just going to type Mongo yep I can see it's already installed here now in earlier versions of this container the MongoDB wasn't actually installed and you'd have to install it separately so now what we can do with MongoDB is we can actually look at the credentials for the username and password. So let's do that now. And we can do that with this command here. And now here I can see the username that I created. And there's the fake email address that I put in. Now this next part here, this is the password that I chose earlier in a salted form. So this is the salted form of the password called password. Now passwords are stored with salt, so they're not actually visible when they're stored in a database or something. So now I'm going to copy and store this password because this is going to be useful in the unified controller that we can't get in. So we can just use this salted password and we know what the password is and then we should be able to get in. Now just one thing to note with passwords that are generated with salt is the next time that I generated the exact same password, the salted password would look different. I'll just quickly show you now. So here you can see the salted password is different. But the actual password this is a salt of is still password. So basically you can have many different versions of this salted password for the same password. I hope that makes sense. So that's all I actually need this container for. And now just for the sake of this video I'm going to go back into this unified controller here. And now I'm going to go to the settings here and then admins. And I'm going to edit the username and password for this admin here. So let's change the name to Ed. He wants the original password for me to make changes, so that was password. But I'm going to change this password now to something else. So first I'm going to open up a text editor and I'm going to type anything random into here. Okay, that'll do. That'll be my password. I'll never remember that. So now I'm going to paste this in here and in here. Okay, they're both the same. And I'm going to click submit. We can see here the username's changed to Ed and I can't remember what the password is. So now I'm going to log out and try and log back in again with admin um, password okay and as expected there's a login error so now what I'm going to do is reset the password to be password so let's close this window so let's go back to the container and again open a console window so now I'm going to run this command here to inspect the admin usernames and passwords okay so we can see here the username is Ed there's my email address and so here's the password obviously it's not in plain text it's a salted password, so we can't actually know what the actual original password is. But what we can do is to swap this salted password for one which we already do know what the original password is. So I'm going to swap it for the one for which I know whose original password is just password. So let's paste in this command, and again this command's in the description. Now this here, this is the password for which we know what the original password is. And this command will swap it out for whichever user that we put in where it says put in the username here. So to know an admin username we just look up above and my username here is Ed. So I need to put that username in here swapping out this one where it says put in the username. So with that done I'm just going to hit enter. And so now that password's changed. So if I clear the screen and if I run the command again that will show us the credentials we can see that's all been changed. So now I should be able to close this window and go back to the Unify Controller web UI. Now this time I should be able to put in username Ed and password as password. And hopefully now when I click sign in, we'll be in. Let's see. Okay, so there we are, we're in the controller. And so now if I wanted to change the password to something better, I just go to settings, admins and change the details here. Okay, so that's how to reset the password in the latest container of the Unify controller. If you remember earlier, I said that some of the older container versions don't have MongoDB. And also, if you're running the controller in pure Linux, 
you probably won't have MongoDB installed either. So now let's look at that. Okay, so for that I'm going to head across to another server where I'm running an older version of the same container. So I'm going to go across to my main server here where I'm running my proper Unify controller, which is a bit older. So I'm going to log in here and put in my username and password. Yep, I can't log in. So I'm going to change the password here as well. So let's enter the container through the console. And you see if I type Mongo here, hasn't a clue what that is. So we're going to have to install that. So to do that, first I'm going to put in this line here and hit enter. And then this line here and enter. So that's just added a GPG key to the app sources key ring. And now let's do an app get update. Now you'll see some errors at the end of this. Don't worry about it. We can just continue on. So ignoring them, let's just clear the screen. So now we can app get install the MongoDB. Notice that I've got the flag allow unauthenticated here. And so that's pulling down. So now that's done, let's clear the screen. So now Mongo should be installed. So just to check, let's type Mongo. Okay, that's good. Okay, so now we just go through exactly the same commands now as I did in the previous bit with the other container. So again, let's type the command to see the credentials. Okay, we can see the name here is Ed and here's the salted password. So I don't know what that is. So let's change it. And the email here, yeah, I've blanked that out because I don't want everyone to know my real email here. So we'll put in the command again with that salted password. I'm going to need to change this here to the username Ed, so I'll do that now. Okay, so it looks like the arrow keys don't work here, so I'm just going to have to change that off screen and then paste it back in. Okay, so there we are with the name set to Ed and the salted password in. Let's hit enter. Okay, so now let's close the window. Go back to the web UI. Let's put in the username Ed and password, password. And there we are, we're back in. And just as before, we could just go and change the password to something more secure now. Okay, so what if you're not actually running the Unify controller software in a container or on Linux? So next, let's take a look at doing the same, but on a Unify controller first running in Mac OS and then another one running in Windows. Okay, so here we are in Mac OS. So I'm going to open up the Unify controller and try and log in. I don't know the username and password, so it's going to fail. So let's reset it just to be password. We're going to need to download MongoDB Shell. So let's go to a browser and then go to mongodb.com. Then click on Software and go to Developer Tools. Then choose MongoDB Shell. Click on the Download button and then here I'm going to download it for Mac OS. Now here I've actually copied the link into the description so you don't need to come through here if you just want to copy and paste from there. So I'm going to download this zip file onto my desktop. And next we need to extract the file from here onto the desktop again. Then we can delete the downloaded zip file and now we want to create a new folder and pop the extracted file into there. And now let's rename this folder to Mongo SH. Okay, so now we need to work in the terminal. So let's open up a terminal window. Now, if I type ls to list out the files, we can see that the desktop folder is here. So let's change directory into that and then into the MongoDB SH folder that we created there too. Again, I'm just going to list the files here and we can see the Mongo SH files there. So because we just downloaded this file, it's not executable at the moment. So we're going to have to change the file permissions on this. So I'm just going to type chmod777, then Mongo SH. So now we can run this file by typing dot forward slash mongo sh space and then hyphen hyphen port and then the port number which is 27117 okay so now we're connected now we need to switch the database to ace so we need to type use space ace and now run the following command to see all the unify admins and that's db.admin.find open brackets close brackets okay so here the admin name is actually unify and here's the salted password which we're going to swap out. So let's paste in the command, again it's in the description. Just make sure you've got the names matched up here and they're the same. Just hit enter and then the password's being reset. So now let's go back to the Unify Controllers web UI and pop in the username as Unify because we found that in the admin list and the password to password which we've just reset it to. Okay, so we're back into the Unify controller on Mac OS. Okay, so lastly, let's move on and do this in Windows. Okay, so here I am on a Windows machine. I'm going to open up the Unify controller. 
and then I go and try and log in but again I don't know my username and password so it's going to fail. We're going to need to download MongoDB shell for Windows so let's go across to mongodb.com and grab that. Click onto software then developer tools, choose MongoDB shell, click on the download button and then download the version for Windows. Now if you want to just use the direct link then I've put this link in the file in the description. So download the file then go to the directory where it's downloaded into and unzip that file. And then just rename the folder to Mongo SH. Ok so next what we want to do is we want to cut this folder and then move it and paste it into the root of the C drive. Ok so now we need to do some work in the terminal. So let's go down to the bottom left, click on there and then type CMD and open the terminal window. So now we want to change the directory into that folder we just pasted into the root of the C. So type CD space C colon forward slash Mongo SH. So I'm just going to type DER to list the files in this directory. And this Mongo SH.exe is what we're going to be running. So now let's connect to the database and type Mongo SH space hyphen hyphen port and then the port number which is 27117. Right, so now we want to change the database type to ACE. So we're going to type use ACE and then enter. OK, so now we want to list the admins in the Unify controller. So for that we want to type db.admin.find open brackets close bracket. OK, so here I can see that my admin name is set to Unify. And here the salted password, which I don't know what it is. That's what I'm going to change. So paste in the following command, obviously changing the name to whatever your name is here. And here's our known salted password, which we know is set for the word password. So let's hit enter and add that in so we can log into the web UI. OK, so let's close the terminal window now. That's done. Now let's open up back the Unify web UI and see if we can log in. So we know that the admin username is Unify and the password, well, we've reset it to password. So let's click sign in and we should be in. OK, cool. All working. Back into the controller. OK, guys, so that's it. A little bit of a different video than I normally do. But something that I'm hoping will really help some of you guys, saving you having to reset all of your Unify controllers, if like me, you come across a time when you don't know the username and password to log into a Unify controller. So if you did find this video useful or you think you might find it useful in the future or you just liked the video and found it interesting, then please guys give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Now before we wrap this up and I go, I just want to give a huge thank you to all of my patrons and supporters out there. Thank you so much guys for enabling me to make these videos which I really love doing. And if there's anyone out there watching this video who wants to join those great bunch of people, then please see the links in the description below. Anyway guys, it's getting late now, so it's time for me to go. But whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good and I'll catch you in the next video.